तो हाई एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ पी आई बी टू फोर सेवन इन टूडे सेशन गाइज वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द पी आई बी न्यूज फ्राम ट्वेंटी थर्ड जुलाई टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू एंड आई आई टोल्ड यू गाइज की इस हफ्ते सेशन जो है वो कंटिन्यूसली रहेगा बिकॉज ऑफ लॉर्ड ऑफ न्यूज ड्यू टू द पार्लियामेंट्री सेशन और राइट तो लेट्स बिगिन विद द सेशन बट बिफोर वी बिगिन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हैव द पी डी एफ ऑफ दिस सेशन यू कैन जॉइन द टेलीग्राम चैनल Right, and the link is provided in the description. And for the upcoming NABAD grade examination, we have launched a crash course. So you can enroll in this course course by visiting anojindal dot in. Right, and you can also download the app. So let's move ahead to the very first question, which says, consider the following statements with respect to the scheme of strengthening of pharmaceutical industries, and you have to identify the correct statement. Now you have to identify the correct statement regarding this scheme. Now this is this has been recently launched. Right. ये अभी रिसेंटली लॉन्च की गई है एंड दिस हैज बिन लॉन्च बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ केमिकल एंड फर्टिलाइजर्स मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ केमिकल एंड फर्टिलाइजर्स इज हेडेड बाय मिस्टर मनसुख मंडाविया हु इज आल्सो द मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर और राइट सो टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस स्कीम द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस स्कीम गाइज इज टू मेक इंडियाज फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री मोर कॉम्पिटेटिव इन टर्म्स ऑफ बोथ क्वालिटी एंड कॉस्ट क्वालिटी और कॉस्ट के टर्म्स में इंडिया की जो फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री है उसको और ज्यादा कॉम्पिटेटिव बनाना इस स्कीम का ऑब्जेक्टिव है एंड इट इज ऑल्सो एम डैट मेकिंग इंडिया फार्मा एम एस एम ईज अ पार्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेन बाय इंसेंटिवाइजिंग दम उनको इंसेंटिवाइज किया जाएगा सो दैट दे कैन ऑल्सो बिकम द पार्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेन द टू टाइप्स ऑफ बेनिफिट विच विल बी प्रोवाइडेड अंडर दिस स्कीम इज नंबर वन क्रेडिट लिंक्ड कैपिटल विल बी प्रोवाइडेड एंड इंटरेस्ट सब्सिडी विल बी प्रोवाइडेड नाउ फॉर वट पर्पज दिस क्रेडिट लिंक कैपिटल एंड इंटरेस्ट सब्सिडी विल बी प्रोवाइडेड This is for technology upgradation of MSME units which are working in the pharmaceutical sector. All right, and up to rupees twenty crores will be provided for common facilities including research center and testing labs in pharmaceutical clusters. All right, and the implementing agency for this particular scheme is SIDB. Now, why SIDB is the implementing agency? Because there is an element of credit linked capital and interest subsidy which is being maintained by subsidy and under this scheme also. it will be implemented by sidbi all right so therefore uh, now we have to identify the correct statement and now this much only this much detail uh, has been provided by the ministry so agar in future all detail aayegi so we will discuss those details as well all right so you have to identify the correct statement for establishing common facilities including research center and testing labs in pharma clusters up to rupees 20 crore will be provided absolutely correct SIDB is the implementing agency for the scheme. बिल्कुल सही बात है. And the nodal ministry is the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers. So all the three statements are absolutely correct, which means option D, all one, two, and three will be the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two. Very very important question. With which country government of India has signed two MOUs on recognition of education, including maritime education? कौन सी country के साथ government of India ने दो MOU sign किए हैं? One is for recognition of education and another is for recognition of maritime education. The country in question, guys, is United Kingdom. Option E would be the correct answer. But let's talk more about these MOU. So the first MOU has been signed for mutual recognition of educational qualification. And under this MOU, Indian senior secondary school or pre-university certificates will be considered suitable for entry into the United Kingdom higher educational facilities. Right. Similarly, the bachelor degree, the master's degree, and the doctoral degree of India and UK will also be considered equivalent to each other. Dono ki degrees, dono countries ke jo degrees hain, wo ek dusre ke desh mein equivalent mani jayegi under this MOU, right? And the second MOU has been signed for cooperation in maritime education, and this is for mutually recognizing the certificates of maritime education and training. कॉम्पिटेंसी एंड एंडोर्समेंट ऑफ सी फेयर इशूड बाई ईच अदर अगेन म्यूचुअल रिकोगशन ऑफ मेरी टाइम एजुकेशन इन बोथ द कंट्री द सेम ऑब्जेक्टिव एज इन द एजुकेशन क्वालिफिकेशन राइट एंड देन देर इज अ फेम वर्क एग्रीमेंट विच हैज बिन साइंड इन द एरिया ऑफ हेल्थ केयर वर्क फोर्स एंड अंडर दिस फ्रेम वर्क एग्रीमेंट कोऑपरेशन ऑन नर्सिंग एंड एलाइड हेल्थ प्रोफेशनल विल बी देर ट्रेनिंग ऑफ हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल विल बी देर एंड देर विल बी मेजर्स टू ब्रिज द स्किल गैप अमंग द हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स और राइट तो देर फॉर द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ई यूके राइट आई होप दिस क्वेश्चन इज क्लियर एंड द एक्सप्लेनेशन इज ऑल्सो क्लियर मूविंग अहेड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री 
विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू पी एम जी वन योजना नाउ लेट सी हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू of you knows the full form of g1 can you tell me the full form of g1 it is quite difficult question agar aapko nahi pata hoga to koi baat nahi i will uh, tell you guys in the comment section or in the next class you have to tell me the full form of this pm g1 yojana right so let's talk about this scheme remember the objective of this scheme guys is to provide financial support to integrated bioethanol projects for setting up second generation ethanol projects in the country right and remember this scheme is being implemented by ministry of petroleum and natural gas which is headed by mr hardeep singh puri so basically the basic objective of this scheme is to provide financial support for integrated bioethanol projects in the country and these bioethanol projects are setting up second generation ethanol projects in the country right it was launched in the year 2019 up to financial year 2024 with a total outlay of 1969.50 crores all right and talking about the financial assistance so maximum rupees 150 crore per project is provided for commercial projects in the area of of course bioethanol right and rupees 15 crore per project is provided for demonstration projects in the bioethanol sector all right and till now till now the financial assistance of rupees 50 crore has been sanctioned to four projects which are located at bhatinda in punjab panipat in haryana bargarh in odisha and numali garh in assam and rupees 15 crore to one demonstration project has also been provided to a project which is located at panipat in haryana and it has been approved all right so that's it about this scheme now you have to tell me the full form of the scheme don't worry agar aapko nahi pata hoga to i will tell you guys all right so you have to identify incorrect statement now it is being implemented by ministry of environment forest and climate change is that so no it is being implemented by ministry of petroleum and natural gas so the correct answer should be option a only because that is the incorrect statement it was launched in 2019 correct financial assistance of maximum 150 crore per project for commercial bioethanol projects correct rupees 15 crore per project for demonstration project this is also correct and the total outlay is 1969.50 crores so all the b c d e statements are absolutely correct which means option a will be the correct answer and now let's talk about question number 4 very very important question the nabard grade a aspirants jo upcoming nabard grade a examination hai i believe ye question aapke exam mein definitely aana chahiye right so you have to consider the following statements regarding india innovation index 2021 and this guys is the third edition third edition right and you have to identify the correct statement all right so let's talk about this india innovation index 2021 which has been released by niti aayog now what is the purpose of releasing this index so remember it is a comprehensive tool for evaluation and development of the country's innovation ecosystem right jo hamare country ka uh, innovation ecosystem hai uski evaluation karta hai hamara ye index by ranking states based on various indicators right it is prepared by niti aayog and institute for competitiveness do you remember this total number of indicators now is 66 last year it was 36 but now it has been increased to 66 which are distributed across 16 sub pillars but the very important thing is that there are seven key pillars on which this index is based and these are human capital investment knowledge workers business environment safety and legal environment these are known as enablers these in, uh, pillars are known as enablers which tells about the inputs theek hai which tells about the inputs which states are uh, giving for developing their innovation ecosystem and the uh, rest to knowledge output and knowledge diffusion are known as performers which talks about the output right so these are the seven key pillars on which this index is based now talking uh, about the ranking so the states are divided into three states and uts are divided into three categories which are major states ut and city states and then we have northeastern and hilly states right so among major states karnataka is at number 1 followed by telangana and haryana among ut and city states it is chandigarh karnataka last year also it was at number 1 so it has retained its position chandigarh is at number 1 among all the uh, ut and city states followed by delhi and andaman nicobar islands last year delhi was at number 1 now it has slipped by uh, one rank now it is at rank number 2 and rank number 1 currently is held by chandigarh now please remember here among all the states and uts among all the states and uts which is at the top 
इट इज चंडीगढ़ विच इज एट दी टॉप बिकॉज इट हैज दाइएस्ट स्कोर ऑफ ट्वेंटी सेवन पॉइंट एट एट और राइट तो इफ द एग्जामिनर इज आस्किंग यू अबाउट द ओवरऑल टॉपर इन दैट केस दंसर वुड बी चंडीगढ़ बट अगर उन्होंने कैटेगरी वाइज पूछा है तो इन दैट केस इन अमंग मेजर स्टेट्स इट इज कर्नाटका अमंग यू टी एन सिटी स्टेट्स इट इज चंडीगढ़ and among north eastern and hilly states it is manipur which is at number 1 followed by uttarakhand and meghalaya all right so that is all about this index guys and now let's come back to the question you have to identify the correct statement karnataka has topped among major states absolutely correct delhi has secured highest score among all the states in uts no that's not delhi that's chandigarh with a score of 27.88 all right and the index is based on 66 indicator this is absolutely correct Uh, seven, 16 sub pillars are there and seven key pillars are there all right so one and three should be the correct answer option c all right and let's move ahead to question number 4 and from uh, question number 5 and from now on and up to question number 16 all the questions are short answer question guys which do not require any detail explanation theek hai and ye jitne bhi questions hain these are all uh, taken from the replies which which have been submitted by various ministries in the parliament all right so which power company has signed a statement of intent with niti ayog yesterday to develop the net zero greenhouse gas emissions road map right so kaun si it is not yesterday it was signed on 22nd it was signed on 22nd july all right so which power company is this remember this power company which has signed the statement of intent with niti ayog to develop the net zero greenhouse gas emission road map is ntpc limited option d National Thermal Power Corporation Limited, right? Limited is also there. So NTPC is the correct answer. Now, of course, we have the target of achieving net zero by the year 2070, as announced by the Honorable Prime Minister during COP26. Question number six: Ministry of Science and Technology, headed by Dr. Jitendra Singh, he is also the Minister of Earth Sciences. Do you remember this? Is implementing national mission. interdisciplinary cyber physical systems with an aim of development of technology platforms to carry out research and development translational and research product development incubating and supporting startups and as well as commercialization so this is the objective of this national mission the question is what is the total budget outlay of the scheme can you identify now this budget outlay is for a period of 5 years do you remember this and this budgetary outlay is 3660 crores option a is the correct answer question number 7 as per the ministry of petroleum and natural gas how much percent of ethanol blending has been achieved by oil marketing companies now we have to uh, achieve the 20% ethanol target by the year 2025 and 10% by uh, this year 2022 and we have achieved this so as per the ministry Uh, uh as on june 2022 the oil marketing companies has achieved 10.16% of ethanol blending targets uh, uh as stated by the ministry of petroleum and natural gas option e is the correct answer what is the amount of subsidy provided to pradhan mantri ujjwala yojana beneficiaries and now the second edition is under implementation under which 1 crore lpg connections are being provided to the beneficiaries but this question is about the subsidy provided to the beneficiaries for refilling of the 14.2 kg cylinder up to 12 refills per year theek okay, hai so the subsidy is provided only for the refilling of 14.2 kg cylinder jo ki hamara uh, general cylinder hota hai hamare gharon mein use hone wala domestic use ke liye and this subsidy is provided only up to 12 refills per year right so this subsidy this amount is rupees 200 option c is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 9 under begum hazrat mahal scheme which is being implemented by ministry of minority affairs ministry of minority affairs which is now headed by smriti irani theek okay? hai and she is also the minister of women and child development i hope you all know this and her lok sabha constituency is amethi which is of course in uttar pradesh right so under begum hazrat mahal scheme how much amount is provided as scholarship to class 9th and class 10th student and remember this scheme is exclusively for minority girls right minority girl students ke liye hai ye so for class 9th and class 10th rupees 5000 per annum is provided while for class 11th and 12th for class 11th and 12th it is rupees 6000 per annum all right so option a is the correct answer atal bhujal yojana is being implemented in 8562 gram panchayats of 80 districts in seven states 
which of the following is not among the seven states now you have to tell me the name of these seven states because i have discussed it so many times at least with the enrolled students theek hai so seven states jo hain wo aapko kaun se hain ye batane hain to char to yahi pe given hai gujarat haryana karnataka madhya pradesh odisha is not uh, the state in which atal bhul jal yojana is being implemented so you have to tell me the name of the three more states where atal bhul jal yojana is being implemented right and now i am asking this question because i believe you guys are preparing well for the nabad examination and if you can answer this question your preparations are going very good and if not agar aap answer nahi bhi kar pate ho then only then also there is no need to worry theek hai because it is a difficult question all right question number 11 which institute under ministry of earth science has developed low temperature thermal desalination technology for conservation of sea water to potable water and this has been successfully demonstrated in lakshadweep islands now of course you don't have to go into the details of this technology that is absolutely not required just remember that this technology has been developed by national center uh, by uh, national institute of ocean technology and iot option c is the correct answer guys to this question question number 12 <clears throat> how many beaches across the country have been conferred with internationally recognized blue flag certification the very first beach to have this cert, uh, to have this certification was the chandra prabha beach chandra prabha beach which is located in odisha and uh, how many beaches till now have been conferred with this certification so the number is 10 option d is the correct answer to reduce congestion at airports and to address the challenge of sub optimal infrastructure airports authority of india has taken up development of new and existing airports with a projected capital expenditure of around how much in the next 5 years so you have to fill this gap how much amount will be spent by the airport authority of india for development of new and existing airports right so that's rupees 25000 crores option a is the correct answer and this amount will be spent in the upcoming 5 years question number 14 how many greenfield airports have been given in principle approval by the government of india and eight are already under operation so can you identify the number yes it is 21 so 21 airports are there which have been given in principle approval by the government of india all right question number 15 government has approved the revival of unserved and underserved airport scheme for the revival and development of unserved and underserved airports of state governments airport authority of india civil enclaves central public sector enterprises helipads and water aerodromes the question is not this question is what is the total cost of the scheme right so the scheme is of course for revival of unserved and underserved airports of various authorities and the total cost for this scheme is rupees 4500 crores option c is the correct answer and the last question for today how many udan routes have been operationalized up to july 2022 under udan scheme that is ude desh ka aam nagrik scheme which is of course being implemented by ministry of civil aviation headed by jyotiraditya sindhya right so total 425 airports have been operationalized up to july 2022 under the udan scheme and guys that's it for today's session i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section and i will see you in the next session tomorrow goodbye take care and god bless